Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. Happy New Year. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Happy New Year, Brian. What's going on? How much? Happy New Year to you, Pablo, as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope everyone had a safe and enjoyable New Year. Um, Not a lot of news, but certainly interesting news. Uh, Very, very... Put a smile on your face type news. <laughs> um, uh, for and, and some worry for others. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to talk about um, Richard Donner throwing some shade as Zack Snyder and anyone else who does certain films a certain way, I guess. I think he's throwing shade at. Um, we'll talk about some of the excitement Warner Warner Media has experienced with the release of uh, Wonder Woman 84 on their platform, HBO Max, and how they're fast-tracking to do the Wonder Woman 3 movie um, based on what seems to be a very uh, successful uh, release on their part, right? Then we'll briefly talk about Superman and the Lois Lane uh, not Lois, is it? Yeah, Lois Lane t- teaser that the, their show on C- CW. Um, that'll be a short conversation. Um, and the the one that was very interesting and also very worrisome a bit. I don't know how worrisome worry we should be, but it's certainly very interesting that uh, there is tension on the Batman film between uh, Matt Reeves and. Uh, Pattinson. So, Richard Donner threw some shade um, in an interview he he did recently. Um, I, as all, all of you may know, that he's uh, uh, directing Lethal Weapon Five, which is, should which should be interesting. Um, a lot of things are come, making a comeback, right? It's like it's amazing. Cobra Kai, every everybody, everybody who wasn't working is working. <laughs> um, but I, let me just start off with this quote from Richard Donner. There are so many people that make superheroes so cynical. It's depressing when they're dark, dark and bleak and angry with themselves and and the world. I don't find it entertaining. I think there's enough reality going on for that. We just got over four years of that, and I think we crave we crave the opposite. When you see it done right, by my standards, it's so fulfilling. I'm very happy and proud when I see them. When it's done wrong, it's such a disappointment. Brian, I kind of agree with his sort of take. Um, you know who he's talking about. I mean, that's the thing. This is, the, I mean, you might as well put a name tag on. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this is, the, this is at 90 years old. Richard Donner is word. 90. I did not know that. I'm he like 90. 90. I'd be chilling. I'm not directing nothing. I'm chilling. <laughs> and he's directing a film and then he's talking is, about very, and it makes perfect sense. This is, this sound, this sounds like from a person who really, is paying attention to what's going on in in, in the, the genre. This is the man who gave us Superman in 1978. So this is not, I mean, we've had filmmakers weigh in on the genre who have never directed a superhero movie. And I gotta be honest, sure, everyone's entitled to an opinion, but you know, I also feel like a lot of those people would jump at a check from Marvel or DC if given one. This is the OG of the genre. The originator. And it's still held up today as one of the best comic book adaptations ever made. Yes. So for him to say this, it's like, it's like he walked out of the bullpen at age 90 <laughs> and just threw a beanball at Zack Snyder. <laughs> That's what he did. Like, he said, you, basically he said, you messed up my Superman. Why'd you do that? Yeah. That's basically what he yeah. said. Because he, yeah. he didn't say this when Brian Singer did Superman Returns, right? He, he's, he's saying it now. There's only one filmmaker he's really talking about here. So, yeah. in my opinion, I, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. And the fact that he then doubles down and highlights Patty Jenkins and her positive, uplifting view of Wonder Woman is one of the few things he likes. 
I think only further triangulates who he's yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a shade at, at Zack Snyder for what uh, he produced. Um, and listen, I, I, I smiled when he said it. Because what, what else can you do? Unless you didn't like his version of Superman, which if you didn't, then we really can't have a conversation and, and, and have a dialogue between the two films, right? Because you have a certain stance that Zack Snyder is perhaps one of the best uh, films that he did was Man of, Man of Steel. And for some, that is the case. But what he's, what he's saying here is describing everything that Zack Snyder did with the character. And he's telling you straight up, it's disappointment. It's disappointing when, when you do a movie like this and, and, and make it like, you know, dark and bleak when we want to really... Superhero films is really a, a place where you want to escape. And uh, he brings this sense of reality to these, these heroes that um, really doesn't fit, I guess, the, the character. So the other part is the other obvious series you could draw the line to here would be the Chris Nolan Batman's trilogy. But I kind of find the timing of this to rule that out. He didn't say any of it in 08, 2012. And those are bleak, dark movies at points. But it's also the way he describes the character. Bruce Wayne was not mad at the world. That... That quote also tells you, I think he's pointing at the, the way Clark and Superman is portrayed in this series and the way Batman is ultimately portrayed. Those are the characters that stand out to me in the Snyderverse as being mad at something, yeah, yeah. mad at the world, resentful of something. So I think that's where he's going versus kind of calling out the, the Christian Bale-led trilogy from a decade ago. Yeah. It's crazy how, you know, not a lot of people are sort of jumping on this and uh, cause I, you know, I'm on YouTube all day long and I get no notifications of all the YouTubers that I follow that talk about this stuff every single day and every waking moment when something comes out and they haven't really mentioned it. And it's something, you know, Richard Donner, he, again, he gave us one of the best Superman uh, uh, films and it's hard to get into dialogue again with someone who doesn't think uh who, who who believes that Zack Snyder's film is 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 fantastic or great or whatever the case may be but I was certainly amused and gave a standing ovation in my mind to Richard Donner for what he said as an aside, Lethal Weapon 5? What exactly is the Lethal Weapon and Lethal Weapon 5? Like, yeah. like, how the heck could they going to make that work That's with that, Mel Gibson that, and Danny Clover? Yeah, it's like, yo, these dudes, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because, I don't know. But, hey. We digress. Yeah, yeah. Um, Warner Media seems to be happy with uh, Wonder Woman 84's performance on their platform. Half of their subscribers watched uh, the movie, I think the first day of that first weekend, correct? Or the first, first day. day? Yeah. First day. Um, and despite all of the backlash you would call of fans who really didn't think the movie was great, I'm one of them. I'm in that group, which I don't think it was horrible, but it's not. It's the the way they built this up. It wasn't what it, it didn't live up to that. You know, uh, it was, you know, it was, it was a, we haven't gotten anything. We got something. We watched it. It was cool. But, you know, it, it, it certainly didn't bring any excitement or, or again, um, that that feeling of I can't wait to see the next one. So uh, it's interesting to me to find out. Well, I'm interested fi interested in finding out what sort of metrics are they looking at other than they got 500. You know, it's it's like to me uh, breaking a record for opening weekend and still not making enough box to 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 even break even or, or do you know uh, 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 huge numbers overall. They clearly are happy. Now, we do, we obviously don't know the key number, which is how many subscribers did they actually have on the day of release. We knew they had 12 million the month prior from the earnings call. Mm -hmm. 
but we don't know how many people signed up going into December 25th. And that would have been inclusive of them moving most of their slate onto the service as well. So I'm expecting there was a pretty big pickup. Yeah. This movie has been really interesting because the U.S. box office has tracked better than expected. So I think the expectations was the opening weekend would be about 10 million bucks and it did about 17. So all of the publicly traded movie theater stocks traded up a lot the day after the, the first weekend because then the idea that, hey, there's a little more demand here than we thought. The international has kind of been a little more up and down. Um, but I think this movie is actually being viewed as like a box office success in the theater and is being touted as a streaming success for Warner Media. So, you know, we'll find out more in the, in the coming months. But the other thing you brought up, and I'll throw it back to you, is when we did our pod about the review, I thought we were kind of a little more out of consensus in the way we critique the film. It has felt in the last week that we are squarely either in line with how the audience is taking this film, if not even a little more positive than a lot yes. of people are taking this film. It has become very divisive. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there are some people that are being really harsh with this film, and I get it. Again, when you build something up with a lot of hype and you keep delaying it because you want it to be released in the theaters and, you know, in my mind, this movie is fantastic. They want to make as much money as they possibly can and hold off. They didn't decide to do that. Instead, they, did re they released it on HBO Max. And the promotion behind it got everyone excited for this film, but it didn't, love, didn't live up to that hype. It just didn't live up to it. And and there are a lot of things in the film that made sense, that didn't make sense, visually didn't look good. There were a lot of problems with this film. I don't dis necessarily disagree with uh, some of the backlash towards the film, but at the same time, I'm not mad if someone liked it. I, I'll be, I'll, I would, I would be, questioning the person and they say this was fantastic if i hear you know how they do these commercials of of, of they're, they're selling the year yeah, yeah. Ex exactly when they when they put those those, those golden letters and those four stars and it's like come on don't sell me a dream here did you ever so as I, as you recall i i actually raised concerns about this film when the first trailer came out Oh, yeah. I just said to you, I was, and it wasn't because I thought it would be bad. It's that I just didn't see anything that felt like it was a level up. Yeah. And I felt like the end product was consistent with that. So my only question to people was, where did you get the expectation that this was going to be the dark night to the first film's Batman Begins? You know, because I never felt like there was a visual moment or a storyline leak that made me feel like it was going to be that. Like, mm. And I feel like it, it was fine. It was okay. But everything that I worried would kind of not be that great turned out mm. to be not that great. It just felt like it was there for you all along. So that's, mm. that's the part that I don't get is why the initial ratings and reviews seem to be so rave. And then it was like straight down to now people are really coming hard for this film in a lot of different ways and some, and some weird ways too. So I, what are the weird it, ways that you've heard? The political angle on this has really taken on a life of its own. Um, I've, I've read articles where they're trying to draw a line between, you know, because Gagadot's Israeli and you have to serve in the Israeli military. That's sort of a rite of passage as an adult. So they're drawing a connection between that and sort of the portrayal of Egypt or the country that's supposed to be Egypt and the oil industry mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. film. And I have a tough time seeing Doll and Patty sitting in a room saying, you know what, here's what we're yeah. doing. But that's where we're at with this film. And like the Rotten Tomato score, which was around 89, 90 in the weeks leading up to the film is now at 60, which yeah. by comparison, Man of Steel is 56. Yeah. For reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost feels like it's, maybe that's about right. I think we talked about it being a star level down, but yeah. it almost feels like we're a little bit 
almost overshooting to the downside. Like this yeah. is not the worst film ever made. Yeah. It's starting to feel like some people are going for that. And at the same time, it's like Warner Brothers clearly doesn't feel that way because they're fast tracking Wonder Woman 3. So it's you have this conflict of it's clearly doing positive things in areas they care about, i.e. money. But the audience seems very kind of either put off or, you know, like I said, very divisive. And I didn't really see this movie as being that divisive. It just seemed kind yeah. of average. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess based on the success of the first one, people were expecting more. And obviously the trailer, the first trailer that we got, we weren't certain. Certainly we weren't impressed that, that much, but still, I think the expectation being that Wonder Woman, Wonder, the first Wonder Woman was uh, so highly praised and, you know, we were looking forward for this, for the second one, right? And we got it and it just wasn't that great. And some people are just, you know, going in on it hard. I don't, I don't you know, they ha it, had, it, it had its problems. It had its problems. I can certainly agree with some people's uh, objections to certain things in the film and how things didn't make sense. All that stuff was there. What was this in your mind? So I'll give you a comparison and see what you think. Iron Man 2 to Iron Man. Do you think this was worse in comparison to the first movie than that sequel was to the first movie? Because Iron Man 2 basically did the same box office as Iron Man 1, but is not close in quality. Yeah, yeah. When you look back, but it was entertaining. Yeah, it was entertaining. I mean, I, I think it has to do with Robert Downey Jr. entertaining and Army Hammer and some of the cast. They were definitely, um, uh, you can watch them. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't. It the movie's not all great. the problems that I think Wonder Woman had. Okay, so you think that's a cleaner movie? Okay, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So. Um. So yeah, tell us what you think, man. Uh, are people overreacting as to how bad this movie was? I, I think it was just okay, but it's like, I haven't watched it. I'm not going to watch. I mean, I've watched it, but I haven't watched it again. Uh, it certainly doesn't have that rewatch quality unless you love Gal Gadot and you'll watch her over and over again, right? Um, other than that, let us know what you think in the comments. Um. The CW drops uh, a, a, a teaser trailer for the new Superman and Lois show on the CW. I haven't watched it. I don't care. I am not interested, not in the least, in anything that the CW has to do with these characters. Brian, I'm sure you feel the same way. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, it's interesting, the CW universe when it debuted with Arrow was, I think, a real focal point for my TV viewing. I think Arrow and the first couple of seasons of Flash, mm -hmm. super excited, watched every episode, really thought they made some good choices, good casting. The effects were pretty good for a TV yeah. show. Yeah, That almost feels like 100 years ago yeah. when you look at what's coming down the pike for streaming mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So to me, like the CW TV universe, which for them, I'm sure is still drawing. I mean, they clearly keep greenlighting these shows, so they must be yeah. getting better writing than whatever else they're looking at. It just is back of the line for me. And I realize that like, it's hard to say that about a Superman series on TV, but it just, yeah. there's just so many other things that are gonna occupy my time. I doubt I'm gonna have time for that show. And I doubt it lasts nearly yeah. as long. As I'll, probably, I'll probably watch an episode or two just to see how it is. But that lowest seasons thing. are getting short. The, the series are getting shorter, right? Like yeah. Black Lightning only lasted what four seasons. So I'm surprised at that. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking this is four or less three maybe. I don't I don't think it's going to be around that long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you guys excited for for Superman and Lois show? Man, we got one years ago with David. Uh, no, Dean Kane. Dean Kane, very accurate. Different times. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I I don't know what this new multiverse ver, verse that they're building. Um, it just seems backwards almost to me. You know, they're just doing stuff, and multiverse is their excuse for doing it. Tell us what you think. Are you looking forward to 
Superman and Lois show on CW. Let us know in the comment section below. Our last topic. Um, there seems to be some tension going on between Matt Reeves and uh, Pattinson. Robert Pattinson on the set. There are people saying that uh, Matt Reeves is a perfectionist. And that he's had to have Pattinson do 50 takes to get that shot. To get that feeling like, yes, that's Batman. Listen, if you're going, if there's a scene that he wants anger and he's not giving it to him, Matt Reeves is not going to settle for nothing than what he wants. I get it. When someone is doing possibly, I don't know, the best that he can to do something and 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 the director doesn't seem to get it, you get upset, you get frustrated, you get tired. I get all that. 50 takes is a lot, you know? Um, does it worry you to a point where, I don't know if it worries me too much. I don't know if it worries me. What worries you about this? I'm not familiar with Matt Reeves from a process standpoint. I'm familiar with his work. It's been very Correct. good work. Planet yes. of the Apes is a an outstanding, high level, sophisticated action drama series. Filmmakers have a method. So what I read in this reminds me a lot of. And you may not. I don't know if you're familiar, but David Fincher directed like Social Network, um, directed a number of great films. Seven. Uh, which actually this film in some ways echoes the motif yeah. of seven i think in the visuals but david fincher is notorious for this so there's a rumor that if you've ever seen the beginning of the social network rooney mara and jesse eisenberg did over 90 takes of that scene 90 to get the one that you saw and fincher's method what he says is he believes that you break the actor down by wearing them down, by having them do it so many times that when they get to that take 50, take 60, take 70, that's when they are free to do the part. They're actually acting. That's his belief. He works that way. He always has. Yeah. So some filmmakers are that way. Other filmmakers are the opposite. So Clint Eastwood, Eastwood, Clint Eastwood notorious for basically like, you one want to shot. work with him, it's one <laughs> take. <You're> good. <laughs> So my thing with, with, with Pattinson would just be, unless this is something that Matt Reeves has never done before, you had to know when you signed the contract, the, the, the that kind of relationship happen. and the kind of set that you were going to be on. Now, and he, it's not like he hadn't done any big filmmaking he just did tenant now granted chris nolan is known as sort of an actor's filmmaker like he's a little more not that he doesn't not that he doesn't want to take but he's a little more relaxed and free that's the rumors he kind of lets the actor go with mm. go. but that's still a massive production and that was really the question with pattinson when he was cast as batman is he had done the artsy stuff he had done the small films post twilight he had really worked to get away from yeah. these big budget films and like how did he feel about coming back to something like that but so I don't know. I, I mean, at the end of the day, like, if it's leading to great performance, they're all going to kiss and make up at the end. Oh, yeah. You know, if it's if it comes out on screen in an unhealthy way, then, yeah, then we have concerns about where this is headed. But, yeah. you know, I mean, will be will he do two, three, four of these movies? But yeah, I, I just I find, again, I find it hard to believe he didn't know the method of the filmmaker that he was signing up to work with on something of this nature. So Hopefully it's just that. Yeah, hopefully it's just that. But you mentioned something that sort of worries me if like, you know, after this movie is done and, and it's all said and done and who knows what sort of records it's going to break. I think it's going to break some records. Will Robert Passant want to come back? I'm, I don't know if he signed them for more, but, um, you know, certainly this uh, sort of uh, bump in the road in their relationship and in their work uh, seems to be taking its toll on Pattinson and the uh, perhaps the connection that they had in the beginning when they were starting filming and, and now is sort of coming to a head. But who knows? Um, I certainly agree that 
you know, Matt Reeves is trying to, this is, this. there's a lot of pressure to deliver on this film, especially after that trailer, especially after that trailer. And so, hey, do, Matt Reeves has the right to do what he needs to do to get what he wants in order to deliver what he thinks will be the best Batman we have ever seen on screen, which is what I believe we'll see. Well, there's a lot of pressure too because of the calendar, right? So we have Suicide Squad, which yeah. you know, I think we're, we're getting more excited about, but I don't care how fast they're fast-tracking Wonder Woman 3, they haven't started it. Yeah. There's been no signs on Aquaman 2. We keep hearing rumors Henry Cavill's back, but there's nothing happening with a Man of Steel sequel. Yeah. So we basically have Black Adam and this, the Batman. That and the Flash movie, which may happen in 3022. <laughs> so my point is, this has to deliver because they don't have a pipeline right now yeah. of kind of films in production, you know, that can deliver numbers for them. So yeah, there's an enormous amount riding on this being better than good. Yeah. Although they have a big pipeline they want to get going. I know we're going to talk about that, but yeah, Walter, yeah, yeah. Walter Hamada, apparently his, his interview with the New York Times, I mean, they're apparently going all in on DC, but. Oh yeah, I mean, again, and I, and I, and I, re, and I use that word multiverse again, because they're using that to, to tell two uh, stories for, of the same character that are going to be sort of, um, we're going to be watching them at the same time, sort of, right? Um, with Gotham, the show, um, the, the, the movie, uh, Bat, uh, Ben Affleck's uh, version, uh, Keaton. You know, there's going to be a lot going on. Um, so, I mean, there's nothing, obviously, despite what we've said about how we think they should approach uh, this universe, I've sort of thrown in a towel and accepted that this is what they're going to do. Hopefully the stories in the movies and the TV shows are good. That's all I really care about at the end. Um, I think the, the connectivity of these, uh, of this content is certainly welcomed um, to, to tell a longer story and then get that payoff with this big film, you know, because again, nothing beats, man, that feeling. Like when you see on IG or wherever, on Twitter, wherever that video is, 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 is that you're watching it on or what platform you're watching it on, you see that, that people recording when they were watching Endgame and Infinity War and those moments where the, the crowd is just screaming and, and clapping and are happy that's, 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 you know, you haven't, you don't get that off. You know, everybody's usually sitting and, you know, you get a few scenes here and there where you clap or you laugh. And then when the movie's over, you may get a few claps here and there. If you don't get any, all the same is whether you liked it or not. And you walk out, but you don't get the same reaction. Or I haven't seen the same reaction that you've gotten with the, the Marvel films. And that's what I sort of want to feel. Uh, I, I certainly got that with the Batman trailer. When I saw that trailer, I was hyped for days. You couldn't talk to me about Marvel right now. I, no. Did you see what they just showed? And they've only shot a, a, a certain amount of it? I'm telling you, man, the... Anything else that they show leading up to to the Batman um, is certainly going to bring a lot more excitement to that film when it finally does arrive. And then hopefully, you know, we're able to go back to the theaters and things are sort of back to normal. But the fact that we're able to go back to theaters when that movie comes out, I'm telling you, man, it's going to be you know, barring the, the, the reviews and, you know, because we never know, right? But if the reviews are, let's say, 80 and above, it's going to do gangbusters at the box office. I'm telling you now. So there's a few other, few other things to look forward to. We got two weeks till the WandaVision 
show comes out January fifteenth. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm, I'm, I'm. You don't, you don't, you don't know how much I'm looking forward to seeing that. And I think the sentiment is is, is replicated all around the world who, who are Marvel fans and MCU fans. Uh, that's gonna be dope. Um, Can I ask you about the Hamada article? Which one? The Walter Hamada article. Sure, sure, it. sure. Okay, so here's my questions for you. I just want your reaction. Okay. Six DC films per year, averaging four for the theaters, two for HBO Max. You think that's the right number? Too many? Too few? Given the track record, what what's what was your reaction when you saw that they're getting, they're gunning to have six adaptations per year in film form? Not series, film. Well, this is certainly more than they're used to, correct? I mean, Marvel only puts out three films a year max. <sighs> I don't know if they think that quantity is sort of going to compete with what um, Marvel does. They certainly understand that there is a demand for it. They understand that there's a, the demand for DC to get their stuff together and give us something dope. Um, did they name, other than the Batman, Black Adam, you know, they're fast tracking Wonder Woman 84. I don't know what titles they're, you know, they intend to do four movies per year, right? And two shows, but what movies are they doing? For this well, year, you know, you know it's it's six movies, two of which get streamed. Ah, okay, that doesn't count the series. So we'll get. That's my second question for you. But are you bringing up the point that I was turning over in my head, which is if you took every available property that they have a film series going on right now, it's not much more than six. Yeah. So how are they going to get to six per year? It just feels like they're going deep into the library. I mean, it's got to include like the Green Lantern, Martian Man. It's got to include stuff that we just haven't gotten confirms on. Yeah. For him to throw that number out there seemed like a very large target. Um, so I was curious, but it. Uh, given their track record, given their track record, who knows if they even like when he said six, they're like six. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> it was three in the meeting. <laughs> you know, you never know if, if, because it seems, man, that th those guys they they just do stuff. They like the joke. They just do stuff, and then say, "Oh, this is happening," and and probably may or may not deliver on it. So it's like I'm not too tied to whatever they say. I don't get excited. I'm like almost like Freddie right now. When you talk to Freddie about DC movies, there is no excitement in his body for him. So, so I'm, was, I'm at that point right now. So the second one was he made a comment about if they're green lighting a movie and working with a filmmaker, they want it to come with a spin-off series that they can put on HBO Max. So Wonder Woman ha now has Amazonians, Suicide Squad has Peacemaker, the Batman has Gotham. What do you think about that philosophy and idea? So the idea that like you get James Gunn for the series and the movie, but the series has to be a spinoff of the movie. Obviously, this, the movies have to be a success in order to really even consider doing a spinoff. And if you do a spinoff, you would assume that that character, it will be in the movie. Whether we like them or not, that'll be... I guess the, the it, time will tell when the movie's released and we'll be like, yo, this guy, this guy's character was dope. And we get a series for it? Sure. Obviously, they fast-tracked already the Peacemaker. We don't have to see him. They're already doing it, right? Um, so I guess John Cena is, is amazing in it. And so, hence, they're doing Peacemaker, which I'm looking forward to seeing. But anything else outside of that, I... I it all depends on what we see and what we get from them. I'm not excited for, I'm not excited for, the only thing I'm excited for is the Batman, obviously, and the Suicide yeah. Squad. Those are the two films that I'm looking forward to seeing. But outside of that, you know, people are going to say Black Black Adam and all, you, all you've gotten is casts. That's it. No story. There's, there's nothing there. All we know is where it's possibly heading. Street Fighter. 
and I don't I don't know I don't know what what else to 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 think other than we'll wait and see if they can do it great but I'm always afraid of doing stuff just to do it. It got me thinking. We that article came out like maybe a month or two ago, where James Gunn was talking about his conversation with Kevin Feige when he told him he was going to go to DC, and Feige's first guess was, "Are you doing Superman?" Yeah, yeah. and that wasn't. But Gunn, Gunn said he pitched Superman to the studio, and that didn't go anywhere. So my question to you is. I'm actually with you. I think Peacemaker could be a very entertaining series, but what if you could get James Gunn to do the Suicide Squad movie and then you could have him contracted to do Superman as a serial on HBO Max? Wouldn't that be more appealing? Like you're I mean, trying to solve a, a higher profile character and that you know, you're not really sure if it belongs on the big screen. I was just trying to wrestle with like, you know, whether it's Green Lantern, whether it's Superman, like when you do a spin-off, you're you're limiting yourself to the B level, C level character automatically by definition. Um, I think Marvel has had the advantage of because the Avengers were such a collective, people don't perceive Falcon and Winter Soldier as as big of a step down from Captain America because of the way they were written into the movies. They had yeah. such big roles. Yeah. So even though it's technically a spin-off, it feels like you're still living with the main characters. Yeah. Whereas like these feel more like you're really going to the satellite characters. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm kind of curious as to whether they would have been better off trying to get these same filmmakers to just say, look, we'll give you a budget and we'll give you this, you know, four parts or six parts, but why don't you work on a main character that we're struggling with from a film standpoint? I think it has to do with possibly Henry Cavill and his involvement with Zack Snyder and where that's going. If there was no, if Henry Cavill was done with the character, then maybe that's a possibility, I think. Because Henry Cavill wants to come back and do something, I don't know if Zack Snyder is going to be the one to helm that. There's a lot of uncertainties there, uh, I guess, or questions that, that probably were, afra were, be, were afraid to be asked about doing that and using Henry Cavill or not. I think Henry, Henry Cavill is the, the, the key in that decision on, on, on whether to do something with Superman and who was going to do it. Uh, but I, yeah, if this guy, James Gunn said, oh, I want to do a Superman, I want to do a Superman series with Henry Cavill, and that was clear, then yeah, I'd like, I'd like to see it. But I don't think that was really... Uh, something that was really touched on or spoken about. No, and so, so, it, so it was probably in limbo. And I think Henry Cavill was the, the deciding factor in whether to move along with James Gunn pitch or not. And obviously they didn't choose that. So Suicide Squad. Last one is to the point about Zack Snyder. So pretty strong words, I thought, from Walter Hamada about the Snyderverse when asked if there would be more of it. And basically said like that's a road to nowhere i think was the quote it felt like it was a lot of it is still on the studio side that they're even having to shell out money to make this which i find ironic because it's i think it's going to be a huge draw for the service so a what did you think about that line of comment from the studio head and then b there's a there there was a quote today because jared leto's out promoting um little things mm -hmm. for hbo max you know, when does like, that come out? End of January. Okay. The trailer looks really good, by the way. Um, in which he said, Zack Snyder is an incredible filmmaker and we have a lot of things up our sleeve, which is the same thing that Joe Manganiello said after he did his Deathstroke camp. What is Zack working on with all these DC guys? Is, he, is there something else happening with Deathstroke with Joker that we don't know about but you got the studio head saying we're going nowhere with this other than the one the one show the one long four part movie I think it's Zack Snyder Zack Snyder's belief that what he will or what they will release 
with the Zack Snyder cut on, on on the on the the service, he believes that there's going to be demand for more, and so he's making his plans for it. There's certainly there's no there's no eye to, seeing eye to eye there no. between Walter Hamada and and Zack Snyder. I think Zack Snyder is a loose cannon, man. I think he's going to do what he wants to do. And Walter, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know what relationships. Obviously, you know, Deborah Snyder is 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 is, is an executive producer and probably has some pull there with Warner Warner Media. So I don't think the conversations are good when it comes to that. And there's just one guy saying that he's gonna do this and we got this in store and stuff and not caring about what Walter Hamada because they think when this th- th- this stuff comes out, we're gonna continue because the people are gonna demand it. Yeah. they I think they're too confident over this release the Snyder Cup movement that they feel that people are gonna want more and they're gonna continue more because the people will demand it. That, that all depends on, obviously, what happens with the Zack Snyder Cup, but I feel like Walter is uh, and, and Warner Brother uh, Warner Brothers are done, and I feel I, and I feel that they, sh- they shouldn't continue because what are they gonna do with Ben Affleck? He's like what almost fifty now. Well, Zack said he wants to do the actual Dark Knight Returns, so there you go. <laughs> and that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. You already gave us it's that. Not like he did. <laughs> not like he didn't do the fight already, but. Anyway. <laughs> So it's like, listen. At the end of the day, Warner Media is gonna do what Warner Media is gonna do, right? and 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 let's see, let's see how this uh, all pans out with the Zack Snyder cut. What? Let's see what sort of reaction it gets. What sort of excitement it builds, and 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 for Walt, Walt, Warner Media, what sort of numbers it brings. I think at the end of the day, that's important to them, more important to them than anything. So here's my here's my, here's my my tongue-in-cheek programming recommendation for, for Warner Media. So you know how like the final four CBS will have on one channel, the broadcasters from the one school and the other channel, the broadcasters from the other school, and then they'll have the national one. So mm-hmm. What, what they ought to do is have two channels on HBO Max for the Snyder Cut. And one is you can just watch the movie, or three. One is you just watch the movie. Two is you watch it with Zach. It's a group watch with Zach. The third should be a group watch with Richard Donner. <laughs> <laughs> and run it at the same time. Yeah. That's what but, I want to see now. Yeah, I mean, listen. <laughs> Again, we said on the show that we want to see Zack Snyder's vision. Obviously, we're going to get it. Do we want to see more? I don't think so. Zach, uh, Brian, you said that after this um, film, we're going to get more. I said no. And But it's possible. It's certainly possible that they may, that they may happen, but do I want it to happen? No, because I want to move on from this, you know? I, I really want to move on. Because these aren't the characters that, not for nothing, that I grew up with. Reading and enjoying, you know, with their comic books and with their animation movies. This isn't the, this, the, this isn't the characters that I know. And Zack Snyder, listen, I... In comic books, they they get people to come in and write. They may provide a different take, a slightly different take, something new that brings a little bit more excitement towards the character, right? Some some new thing that they're able to do or some new uh, hurdle that they have to overcome, whatever it may be. Some win and some fail, right? These are one of those instances where it failed. But they're continuing. Listen, if if that wouldn't have gone down the way it went down with Zach and we would have seen his vision originally, we would not see more of what we're getting. It would have been done. I agree with that. So people are not going to let go. Again, I'm hoping that after this, we see the movie. It was good. 
how good it will be, we don't know. But I certainly don't want to see more of this Zack Snyder interpretation of the Justice League and DC. I'm done with it. But we'll talk about it. Because what else? You know, what are we going to do? We ignore it? <laughs> we'll watch it the first day. But, you know, we, we'll we, 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 we're going to definitely watch it. But it's like, I don't, I said, I'm done. I'm done. I want to see the Justice League. <laughs> Not Zack Snyder's Justice League. I want to see the Justice League. I hear you. Um, once again, thank you for joining us on the Nerd Gen Report. Um, this year is going to be very, very exciting. We got a lot of stuff coming out this year. Um, and it's going to be very exciting to do these shows and talk about what we see, what we interpret to be good and what, what we interpret to be bad and want to hear what people have to say regarding that. Uh, so, yeah, get ready because 2021 there's going to be a lot to watch and a lot, and a lot to discuss. Brian, any last words? No, you said it. I mean, you said it. I mean, two weeks from now, we're going to be talking about WandaVision episode, episode one. I mean, it's a whole new world. Once we hit that, it is a nonstop calendar, whether we have theaters or not. We certainly hope we do. Yeah. But whether we do, it, it, it's just from the minute that show hits, we're basically going to have a Marvel show every week for six months. Snyder Cut will hit somewhere along the way. And once we get through, I think Loki's the last of the three. Either we're going back to the theater for Black Widow, Shang-Chi, um, the Suicide Squad, or presumably those will show up in some form, some way. So, I mean, it is an incredible calendar. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We basically yeah. have, you know, two weeks to uh, yeah. to rest up. <laughs> yeah. Word up, word up, word up. I'm excited, Ben. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm very excited for WandaVision and, and, and the rest of the year. Um, I was sort of disappointed, also glad that they didn't show a trailer for Shang-Chi this, uh, when Kevin Feige did, it, did his thing. Because um, we have a spotlight show for Shang-Chi. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to Shang-Chi. Hopefully it doesn't get delayed, but if it does, I get it. I get it. You know, I, that's something I would like to see in the theaters. Uh, but we'll wait and see uh, to see what happens, man. Because this certainly... Um, you know, when we're not out of the woods yet. No. So anything can happen. So this year is going to be very interesting to see how things play out in terms of whether this stuff goes to the theaters or they've had enough and they'll, they'll put it on the, their, their, their streaming platforms. It'll be interesting to see, but hopefully we get it nonetheless. And there's no more delays. Uh, thank you once again for joining us on the Nerd Gen Report. Please hit the subscription button, hit that like button, hit the notification bell, comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about what we spoke of, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, man, I'm hoping for the Zack Snyder's cut to be good. Because I, you know, because I, I, I understand what occurred there, and I want it to be good. So. I'm looking, I'm really, I'm not excited, but I'm, I want to see it. I want to see it. Like, you know, anything else that everybody's talking about, you want to see what the hell they're talking about. I want to see this because of, of the history of it all. And it's certainly going to be, uh, 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 I guess, very anticipated uh, moment when that releases. Thank you once again for joining us. Have a safe new year. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time on another journey report.